This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits. In this video, we're going to implement the three core flocking behaviors, the cohesion, alignment, and avoidance that we can then apply to our agents so that they can move around with their flock. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a separate folder for these. Create a folder called behavior scripts. And I'm also going to create a separate folder called behavior objects. So the script is going to be where I'm just kind of grouping together all of the C sharp scripts that I'm writing, which are going to inherit from scriptable object and from our uh, flock behavior. But then behavior objects is where those actual, the actual instances of the scriptable objects are going to live. So let's jump into our behavior scripts and I'm going to create three C sharp scripts in here. First one I'm going to just simply call cohesion behavior. Next one will be alignment behavior. And finally, avoidance behavior. We'll start out by opening up cohesion behavior. And this is actually going to inherit from our flock behavior class. And because this is a scriptable object, we're going to need a way to create it. So I'm going to use an attribute up here of create asset menu. And we're going to give this a menu name equal to, I'm going to say flock slash behavior slash cohesion. Now, in order for this to inherit from flock behavior, we need to implement the uh, method. So we're going to, I'm just going to right click on this, do quick actions and refactorings, implement abstract class, and that will automatically create the calculate move method that I need. I'm going to delete start and update because this is again a scriptable object and I don't need those. They won't actually run. And we can delete this throw an exception. We're not um, going to be throwing any exceptions with this particular project. So the first thing we need to do, uh, we can do is we can look at this and say that if we don't have any context neighbors, if there's nothing here, then we can just, we don't need to make any adjustments. So we can save ourselves some time and just quickly check that first. So we'll say if no neighbors return no adjustment. And so that would basically mean returning, you know, a vector with no magnitude, so vector dot zero. So we'll simply do it that way. We'll say if context dot count equals zero, return vector two dot zero. Otherwise, what we can do is we can actually add up all of the um, positions of our context members and average them out. So we'll say add all points together and average. So we'll do this by creating a new vector two called cohesion move, and we'll start it out equal to vector two dot zero. And then we'll iterate through all of our context elements. So we'll say for each transform item in context, cohesion move plus equals item dot position. Now this is another situation where we get kind of an ambiguous call between vector two and vector three. So we do again here need to cast our position of vector three back to a vector two just to clear up that confusion. And then once we've added all these up, we need to make sure that we average them out again because right now um, we basically have to have this one vector that's this very large number that would really exceed the position of all of the neighbors. And so we need to um, average it back out so it comes back and becomes that middle point between all the neighbors. And so we'll do that by simply saying cohesion move divided by equal context dot count. 
Lastly, we need to kind of reset this. This is the global position. We need to make it the actual offset from the agent itself. So we'll say create offset from agent position. So we'll say cohesion move minus equals agent dot transform dot position. Once again, we'll need to cast that to a vector two. Also spell position correctly. And then we can simply return cohesion move. So what all this does is this finds the, finds the middle point between all our neighbors and tries to move there. So we've actually got one working behavior now that we can create in our scene, or in our uh, project. So we'll go over to our behavior objects, right click. If we go up to our create menu, we see that we now have a flock section for our project, specifically the behaviors, and we can create a cohesion behavior. So we have that here. I'm simply gonna call it cohesion for right now. And we can go to our flock and actually add this as a behavior. Now, right now, all that our agents are gonna care about is cohesion, so it's not gonna be that complete flock behavior, but we can actually see this in action. If we jump to our flock script, um, if you still have the demo code up, we can comment that out, and then we can uncomment the block of actual movement code. Um, you can do that in Visual Studio by doing Control K and then Control U. We'll save that. So now we're doing the move again and not the uh, recoloring of things. You can certainly have that play too. It might bog down your script a little bit, but um, you can check it out. And then we'll go back to Unity. And now we can hit play. Oops. Yeah. Now we can hit, save the scene and hit play. And we see that what happens here, what happened pretty quickly, is that all of our flock members just quickly kind of converged on their neighbors. And that's exactly what cohesion is supposed to do. It says, get as close to your neighbors as you can. And so over the course of a few frames, if I play that again, we see that they all just kind of group together into their tight little um, kind of clicks, if you will, based on uh, which neighbors they were closest to. So. Again, not exactly what we're looking for in terms of our behavior, but we do see that cohesion is doing what it's supposed to. Go back to behavior scripts. We'll do alignment next. We can actually copy a little bit from our cohesion. I'm actually gonna copy the create asset menu information because we are going to um, need to create this scriptable object as well. I'm simply going to change it to alignment here, and we want to make sure that we are inheriting from flock behavior. We can actually copy a fair amount from the method itself. So I'm going to copy all of this, paste it over the start and update methods that we're not going to be using. And we're going to, we are going to change a few things though. The first one is that if we don't have any neighbors in this case, we um, don't want to return zero, we want to return the current, we just want to maintain our heading. So if no neighbors, maintain current heading or current alignment. And so what we'll do in this case is we'll return transform, or sorry, agent.transform.up. And so wherever it's currently facing, just continue facing that way. The other benefit of this is that this is a um, vector with, with some magnitude. It's got actually a magnitude of one. So it will give us some forward motion too, even if there are no neighbors. Next, we're going to create this as an alignment move rather than a uh, vector move, or sorry, rather than a cohesion move. And for each transform item in context, we're going to again add to each alignment move. Instead of adding the position though, in this case, we're gonna add the facing of this current object. So we're gonna say transform.transform.up. So whatever way this particular item is facing, that gets added to this overall alignment move. And then once again, we're going to divide the alignment move by the number of neighbors in the context. 
What's nice about this is that because each of these transform.ups is normalized, this actually gets returned as, again, a perfectly normalized um, value, so it'll be um, at a magnitude of 1 for us. In this case, the alignment is actually independent of the position of the agent, so we don't need to create an offset. So we can delete all of this and simply return the alignment move. And that's all we need for alignment. Lastly, we can open up avoidance. And avoidance, again, is going to work very similarly to cohesion. It's actually just going to work opposite of cohesion, and it's only going to care about neighbors that are within that more restricted avoidance radius. So I'm once again going to copy some of the code from our cohesion behavior. I will change the menu name to avoidance here, and I will grab all of the calculate move method again, paste that over, start an update, and make sure that we are inheriting from flock behavior. This works again here that if we don't have any neighbors, then we don't need to adjust um, to the vector 2.0. However, down here we need to change a little bit. And what we're going to do, first off, I'm just going to rename this to avoidance move. And in addition to the actual move itself, we do need to keep account of not just how many neighbors are in the context, but specifically how many are within the avoidance radius. So I'm going to create an integer called n avoid for you know number of things to avoid. And we're going to set that to zero to start. We're going to assume that there are none. Inside of our for each here, uh, we're actually going to do an if check. We're going to say if vector2 dot square magnitude of item dot position minus agent dot transform dot position. So we're going to get that square distance between the item and the agent. If that is less than flock dot square avoidance radius, in that case we will actually add then to our avoidance move and we will also add to our count. So we can add to our count first. We'll say n avoid plus. And then our avoidance move, we're actually going to add something a little bit different in this case because remember this was trying to move toward the position of the neighbor. Now we're going to be moving away from the neighbor. And so what we'll say here is vector2 of member, or sorry, agent dot transform dot position minus item dot position. So that's automatically going to give us our offset there too. And then finally, if we're going to delete all of these, because we don't need the offset, we're calculating that within here, and we're going to say if an avoid is greater than zero, then avoidance move will be divided by and avoid, so we're averaging that out again, and then we can simply return that. If n avoid was 0, then that means that this is actually just equal to vector 2.0, and so we can return that in either case. We'll save that, and that gives us our three core behaviors. So if I, in fact, go to Unity, I can go to our behavior objects and create two new flock behavior alignment and a flock behavior avoidance. Alignment won't really do a whole lot for us right now. It might make some groups of the um, agents kind of line up with one another, but that's about all it would do. Whereas um, avoidance will actually give us kind of the opposite effect of the cohesion if we 
save that and hit play, we should see that they all kind of separate out just far enough. It was a very kind of short and blink if you miss it movement, but if you look again here, we should see that, yeah, like a few of the groups kind of just split up immediately just so that they're all outside of each other's avoidance ranges. Now, obviously, again, this is a very kind of quick and then quick and done movement and not what we want. It's going to be the combining of these that really creates the flock uh, behavior that we come to expect. And so we're actually going to cover that in our next video as we dive into creating our composite behavior that will allow us to combine these um, three separate behaviors into one and apply some different weights to them so that our flock moves as we want it to. In the meantime, like and subscribe for more videos. Uh, please consider supporting on Patreon if you want to support the work I'm doing. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.